uh, we have Senator Marshall at this time. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations to our nominees. My first question is for Dr. Richmond. Dr. Richmond, the Big 12 is one of the most storied <laughs> conferences in the history of our nation. It's known for its academic excellence and obviously the, most, uh, the, the strongest basketball conference <laughs> in the history of this nation for the last 10 years and a top three football programs as well. Let's assume that Texas and Oklahoma leaves and Oklahoma State, from my, my colleague from Oklahoma, that they're out of the conference. If Kansas State was playing West Virginia, A, who would you root for? And B, can you think of a funner place to be than a Kansas State-West Virginia football game? I'd probably be watching the Ducks. <laughs> <laughs> how, can I, how can I win by answering that good answer. Good answer. Okay, well, gr great answer. No, I, uh, certainly from one Wildcat to another, the, what, yeah. what does Senator Roberts say? The ever fighting mighty Wildcats. Uh, welcome and congratulations. Thank you. Let, let's talk about something really important to Kansas, and that's biofuels, and I think important to, to the environmental footprint mm -hmm. of this nation. What do you see for the opportunities for biofuels and specifically renewable diesel and biodiesel? Well, thank you for that question, Senator Marshall. Let me just start by saying, as a, on our farm uh, in the early morning, uh, years and years ago, my father got up every morning and shoveled coal into the furnace to keep our house warm. And now I know that there's a nuclear plant in Kansas that's uh, providing 80,000, 800,000 people energy. What a transition that's 18 made. 18% of our energy from that nuclear plant. It's, it's amazing. Wow. It's amazing. And so transitions can happen and transitions can certainly happen. We can make much more progress in the bioenergy sphere. But again, it takes what's, we just gotta make sure that we're doing the best research that we can, getting it to technology and getting it further. But at, at that and any of the other fossil fuels on all of these, we cannot give up on any of these fuels at all because we need them to drive our economy. That said, we also need to make sure that we reduce uh, our greenhouse gases and make sure that everything is, is uh, the emissions can be uh, um, not be detrimental to the climate as they are right now. And so all of these energy sources, it's important for us to go forward. And nuclear, of course, uh, in, in the respect of emissions is, is a, good, uh, a good resource. But we have to work hard on the uh, carbon capture and other ways to in order to reduce the greenhouse emissions. So I'm excited to hear you talk about taking traditional energy and making it cleaner. <laughs> That's a great start. What would the impact of year-round E15 have in this country as well as the rest of the world? Do uh, you mean in terms of what would, if we make advances in these areas, how would if, it if we were us? If we were using E15 year-round, what impact would it have on tailpipe emissions? Um, could you explain to me what E15 is? I'm sorry. Uh, it's a, an ethanol blend. Oh, of 15%. oh, of course, with ethanol. Well, I think, listen, I think it's important for us to show that this is a, uh, a very powerful way to generate energy for cars. Sorry, I didn't know that right. uh, it called that. Um, but on the other hand, it does give a message to the world and helps us with regards to um, uh, being able to uh, export and do issues in this area. So it's important. It's important. We just have to work some details out. Okay, thank you. Dr. Bure, let's talk about s soil carbon sequestration just for a second. Uh, certainly, I'm excited about those opportunities. You know, the same farmers that took 10 bushel of wheat land and turned it into 70 bushel an acre land could, could develop something at Kansas State University to be used in the ocean. Mm -hmm. We're taking plankton mm -hmm. and teaching it how to absorb more carbon, which is simply photosynthesis, where we would farm uh, the carbon uh, in the ocean, the plankton in the ocean as well. W what do you see on the horizon? What are the opportunities for soil carbon sequestration? And please don't talk about no-till farming or cover crops, which we've been doing on our farm in Kansas for 25 years. W what, what's out there? What's the, what's the vision? What's the future look like to you? Um. Thank you, Senator, for that important question. Yes, this is an area that I'm very, very passionate about. And in addition to the really great options that are on the table, some of which you mentioned, um, I think we have an incredible amount of um, uh, opportunity in front of us when it comes to uh, working with land managers to improve soil health, which is beneficial for improving their productivity, but at the same time builds up carbon in soil and takes it out of the atmosphere and builds up in soil. Some of the most promising technologies out there um, and approach include, for example, bioenergy crops that sometimes tend to have 
uh, sometimes tend to be perennial and also have deep rooting systems that are critical for carbon sequestration. Um, but we also have to bring into the mix to a lot even more extent um, how we can use carbon um, that is currently in waste streams and bring it back into the soil, which also comes with uh, additional nutrients. And I'm talking about um, animal, animal manure, animal waste in general, um, as well as even, even sometimes human municipal waste in the form of biosolids um, that is now being tried across the board as an option for improving soil health, so carbon sequestration, and, and thereby improving uh, productivity of agricultural and, and working lands in general. Um, I think there are a number of these options, in particular ones that have to do with uh, options that allow us to use waste and reroute waste and use it as a resource, uh, options that allow us to store carbon in deep soils in particular, with deeper rooted, uh, in particular perennials, all of these um, and many, many more. This is an, a very exciting area for this field, as you can imagine. Um, and I'm very passionate and excited about the opportunities to work with land managers and all sorts of stakeholders in this area because this is something that is happening um, and I think we need to figure out a way to make sure that we're helping all of those that are doing the good work in this area. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you so much. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Senator. Senator Hirono. 